they called it the 1964 Alaskan Earthquake. They also called it the Great Alaskan Earthquake. And it was also called the Good Friday Earthquake because it struck Friday, March 27th of 1964. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History from the Weather Network in Canada. Releasing about 500 years of stress buildup, this event tore the earth wide open and triggered tsunamis. This Day in Weather History. The whole ordeal lasted an agonizing four minutes and 38 seconds. In that time, lives were changed forever. And so was the geography of the areas that were most affected. It was registered as a magnitude 9.2 megathrust earthquake. Wow, that sounds intense. What is that? A megathrust earthquake occurs at a subduction zone at convergent plate boundaries, where one tectonic plate is forced underneath the other. That had a devastating and permanent effect on the 49th state in the Union, and I'm going to get into that in just a bit. But this movement is caused by a slip along the thrust fault that forms the contact between them. So one part juts up while the other one slides underneath. And if this occurs in the ocean, that pop of earth up and over the other plate will literally thrust the ocean forward. That is the tsunami. Well, this one really did a number on this region and it stretched far and wide. 600 miles, 970 kilometers of fault ruptured all at once and moved up to 60 feet or 18 meters. That mega thrust was the knockout punch. There was mass soil liquefaction, gaping fissures and other ground failures that caused landslides and major structural and property damage in several communities. Now, most who know anything about Alaska will obviously have heard the name of the city Anchorage. It sustained some of the greatest destruction and damage, but it was in large part due to an infrastructure that was simply not reinforced for earthquakes. There needed to have been specially engineered houses, buildings, as well as paved streets, sidewalks, water, sewer mains, electrical systems, and other man-made equipment. But it was not and it all suffered, especially in the several landslide zones along Kinnick Arm. Remember that this day in weather history can be enjoyed a number of ways. Right now, you are listening to the full version of today's story on your favorite podcast provider, but there is also the daily podcast video short. They are shot right here in my podcast recording studio, so you get that perspective, and oftentimes they will include visuals from that day's event, from when it happened, in weather history. So after listening to the full story, go check out the podcast video short on television or online anytime at theweathernetwork.com forward slash weather history. Remember earlier when I promised to outline how the actual geography of the state changed with this? I will now elaborate. 200 miles, 320 kilometers southwest of the wounded city of Anchorage, there were some areas near Kodiak, Alaska that were permanently raised by 30 feet or 9 meters and southeast of Anchorage areas around the head of the Turnagain Arm near Girdwood and Portage well they dropped as much as 8 feet or about 2.5 meters that there is that slip and pop of the earth and this of course resulted in this sunken land requiring a reinforced construction and landfill to raise the seaward highway above the new high tide mark they really should consider doing that to Toronto's Don Valley Parkway here in Ontario, Canada, because that road seemingly floods every time it rains. But that's another story. This reminded me of that story I told you back on February 27th of this podcast. That's the one where I recounted the 8.8 magnitude Chile earthquake that ranks in the top five all time in the world. In the aftermath of that disaster, and just like this one here in Alaska, it did some serious rearranging of the land. If you haven't gone back to listen to it, I invite you to do it. But let me just say this. It was measured with GPS that the city of Concepcion in southern Chile moved more than three meters to the west. That's closer to the ocean. Well, the Chilean capital city, Santiago, was shifted 27.7 centimeters. And across the Andes in Buenos Aires, Argentina, the capital of the country, it was permanently moved four centimeters. Incredible. In the end, it was determined that across south-central Alaska, ground fissures, collapsing structures, and tsunamis resulting from the earthquake caused about 131 deaths. This day in weather history. Hey, do you like the podcast? We'd love to hear from you. If you have an idea, go right now to wherever you're listening to me and rate us if you would, please. It's on a five-star system, and we would love as many stars as you can afford. 
So rate us, but then also review us. This way we can always stay on top of how you'd like to see the show evolve. Then remember to subscribe to this podcast. Click the subscribe or follow button right there, the very same podcast homepage you're listening on. You'll be immediately reminded that the next day is ready to listen to, and you also have access to every episode in the archives. It dates back to June 1st of 2020, so there is a lot that we got to get caught up on on this day in weather history. Tomorrow is March 28th, and I have a story about a powerful storm in Texas that produced hail the size of which most had never even thought could be possible. During the evening hours of March 28th of 2000, a powerful F3 tornado struck downtown Fort Worth. The tornado, hail, wind, and flying debris was more than enough to cause significant damage to several buildings and skyscrapers, but that is all just the beginning of this roll call. The rest is on tap for tomorrow, on this day in weather history, with me, your host, Chris May.